Right, hello everyone and um, welcome to this third um, episode in this series of uh, videos looking at models either I've um, completed from a kit or where I've designed uh, the model or kit. Um, and this one we're on to, as I say, the third video and this is the first one where we're looking at a model that is a kit I've actually designed and is now uh, available for other people to build. And this tiny little model, as you can, as you can see in my hands, um, is for a 24 horsepower a light diesel locomotive uh, built by Hudson Hunslet. Um, you can, if I get it to focus, there you go. You see the Hudson Hunslet um, name on the on the front of the grill uh, there. Um, and as you can see, this is tiny. Again, it's another 009 model. Um, so um, four millimeters to the foot scale, running on nine millimeter gauge track. Uh, but even compared with the previous um, two models we've looked at, that were the same the same gauge. Um, this is really, really small. Uh, I mean, you can see when, when you put it in, in my hand just how just how tiny it is. Um, so yeah, so this was the this was the first kit I designed. Um, I was kind of naive and I guess a little arrogant, thinking that after building two locomotives uh, from kits, I could go and design my my own. Um, so it was a it was a little bit of a of a of an awakening and a and a you know exercise in, in, in finding out all the things I didn't know. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd kind of go go through the process a little. Um, so this is where I ended up. This is um, this is built from the final final kit parts. Um, so this is a, a final production model. Uh, but obviously they went through a number of a number of phases before we got to this. So the first thing um, I did was I went and ordered a bunch of parts, and I'll, I'll stick a photo up on the screen. Um, this was the the gears, the wheels, uh, motor, um, all the kind of um, mechanical parts to make the thing move essentially um, and then I set about using um, modeling software 3d modeling software to build um, to, to design um, the body uh, and um, the, the the chassis the powered chassis essentially um, so what I ended up with was the first test was these two parts so we'll look at the body first um, so this was a as you can see a 3d printed um, shell Quite a number of holes uh, and bits missing, uh, with the intention that these would become um, kind of etched parts. Uh, but you can see from you know it didn't change very much um, between this this initial print uh, and the final final production model. There's very little in the way of uh, of difference. I got the the body reasonably um, good on the first attempt, so that that was good. We'll 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 come back to the etches and, and things that we had to be added to this later. But the actual the actual um, basic shell was was pretty good to start with. Um, this print's kind of showing its age, it wasn't cleaned very well, it was kind of badly mistreated, um, hence the, the yellowing. But um, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, what didn't work on the first attempt was the chassis. So very naively, I designed something that looked very similar to the chassis that was in the quarry hunts that we looked at in the last video. So you can see I've got axles with um, gears on the axles, I've um, got a, a lace shaft running along the body uh, with a gear here and there's one kind of hidden underneath this mount for the motor. It's very difficult to to see it. You can only really drop the gear in from, from this side before you hit the axle on. Um, and then there's a, a pulley um, on the end of the lace shaft. Motor sits in this mount at the top. Um, a little rubber band essentially turns, turns this pulley which um, turns the wheels. Now I can turn it over with my hand. It's very stiff now. It's been sat in a box un un untouched. Um, when it was brand new, when I first put it together, it was a little looser, but still it was quite tight. Uh, and there was just no way that the tiny, tiny little motor that fits on here um, had enough had enough power to turn the wheels over. So unfortunately, it was a bit of a dud, but it did prove the fact that um, it would, it, you know, I could build something where um, it would go into the body shell and would fit and there would be no sign of the chassis between the wheels or anything it would be completely kind of prototypical from that point of view and you can see where the motor would fit inside the the engine bay on the real thing um so yeah so a lot of the a lot of the feedback i got when i when i talked to people about this was that the reason it was so tight and that it wasn't wouldn't move would be that i would need um kind of brass bearings or or even ball bearings um for all the all the, the parts you can see if I turn the you can see it's turning but it's as I say it's quite stiff um, and obviously as you can see here all the parts are just running straight in the printed nylon um, I did open up these holes slightly 
Um, but again, it's still it's just it's just too tight for a tiny little motor to work on. Um, so what I did was I went from this print um, to another print, but this time, and this is a, an assembled one that did actually uh, work. I haven't tried it in a few years, so I don't know if it if it's uh, how the pickups are doing. But um, but this was my first kind of working. Uh, working attempt. I think this is the one where only one of the axles turns. It's the the, bear, the uh, gears went a bit awry during assembly. But anyway, um, it's a 3D printed brass chassis. So when I say 3D printed, they actually kind of print a, a wax uh, master and then do the brass brass casting. Um, but from my point of view, I send off a, a 3D file and I get back a brass a brass object. And you can see I'm putting very little force into this one. And all the gears are turning much nicer. Um, so this was partly because it's brass and I get a nice bearing surface. Partly because instead of using a drill bit to open up the holes, um, I got a proper um, a proper reamer, a straight chucking reamer um, that's slightly over the size of the of the components um, to open up and give proper bearing surfaces. And this actually did run. This ran um, around the track um, quite nicely. Um, as I say, I haven't tried it tried it recently so I'm not sure it's just been I, I only found it again the other day in a, in a box of bits when I was tidying up um, but yeah so that was that was kind of the next step um, and there were a number of changes from the brass version um, so, sorry from the original nylon version um, but it's still it was a bit of a nightmare to um, to assemble uh, what you can see here is that the 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 worm gear here drops between two pieces of the brass chassis so it keeps it nice in place it means it can't move about uh, but it meant actually getting the lace shaft to go through it and getting uh, loctite inside that joint so that the the worm would actually stay fixed on the chassis uh, was an absolute nightmare um, so we had a, a redesign of the of the brass chassis which takes us to to this now this is a, a misprint um, as you can see it's it's bowed um, but I kept it specifically so people could see kind of what the chassis looks like um, so you can see yeah um, basically I've now removed the the cross members that held the the worm gears in place um, so that now essentially you can slide them quite a long way into the middle uh, and that makes it easy to put some Loctite on the on the lace shaft slide the gear over it and then back and wait for it to um, for it to cure and, and, and tighten the the joint. Um, so that worked really well. Also, um, I hollowed out compared with the original print. Uh, I hollowed out the bottom of this piece where the motor sits, and again, that just makes it easier to drop um, the worm gear in from the top, so you're not having to kind of get it in between the between the wheels. Um, and yeah, it's 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 really quite nice. There's lots of all these bits on the edge. Um, which were present on the original one as well. So the central pieces here um, act to retain it into the body. Uh, the body has um, some clips, some little pins in the middle here that engage with 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 that. Um, and then these end end pieces. Uh, there's actually one missing on this print. Another another problem with it. Uh, where basically where you can fit little fold down etched parts to make the uh, the brake gear, uh, which appears on the on the final model. Um, so yeah, so that was that was kind of the next, the next step. And as I say, that got us, uh, that got me as far as a complete. Uh, well, no. So having having got the the motor working, I then needed to uh, work on the etched parts. And I'll throw up a, another photo on the screen because again, I don't have um, a, full, a full a full model to show for this. But essentially, um, I drew up the etches again, something I'd never done before. Uh, I drew up the etches in Inkscape and then had them. Um, turned into etched metal parts by by narrow planet when along with when they did some of their other um, etched sheet runs um, so I, I tested these first by cutting out pieces of the artwork onto paper uh, checking they were roughly the right size I even made some handcrafted uh, brass parts by essentially sticking the the artwork to a sheet of brass and then cutting it out by hand um, uh, to try and get a, a, a perfect match the first time given it was something I'd never tried before I wasn't convinced it was going to work but I, I thought it was best to kind of um, avoid um, too much expense on, on, on lots of parts that wouldn't necessarily work um, so that actually got us to this so this is the first kind of um, complete working uh, model um, uses the test test etched parts 
um, has the, the brass brass chassis. As you can see, there's a slight variation in the way I've attached the, the pickups and stuff. Again, um, learning a bit more about how best to try and attach a tiny little resistor and the pickups and everything else to the bottom. Um, so yeah, so this this was this was really nice. Um, painted in the same red as I painted the previous Quarry Hunt look, just as it was. I liked the colour and it was a nice a nice way of kind of showing the contrast of the two different types of um, locomotives they built. Um, unfortunately, I got the there's an etched piece that kind of I'll show you on another one. There's an etched piece that goes over the back here, um, kind of covers over the the controls um, inside this. Well, I won't call it a cab, but where the driver sits. Um, and on the first version, I didn't quite get the the etched lines in the right place so it's not a particularly good fit um, just here if I can get the camera to kind of try and focus um, there we go um, it's not a particularly good fit so I had to kind of force it um, and try and re rearrange the etch um, but this this was this was nice um, this this took me about well what there's about four months I think to get to this point I started in started working on it in December um, of 2014 and this model I'd finished um, sometime in March probably um, yeah it was um, it, 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 it took a while but um, there was there was there was you know it's not it's not a huge amount of, of time um, so yeah so it was it was really good there was some issues again with etching the makers plates but the, I got the, the grill out all nicely etched um, the side panels the piece here is actually metal mesh added on the inside of the panel um, and yeah and it's all it all works all works quite nicely um, I actually took this to the um, 009 Society AGM um, in April of 2015 um, this one went in their display case for the day and actually came second in the internal locomotive uh, internal combustion um, locomotive uh, category in their modeling uh, competition um, so that was that was quite a nice um, you know way of, of knowing that other people thought what I was doing was was good and, and was nice um, and by this point um, I'd, I'd shown it to a number of people and people on uh, the narrow gauge railway modeling forum that I'm a member of um, had seen it and there was starting to be a bit of a clamor uh, for turning it into a kit um, so yeah so after 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 this one was completed um, as I say we started working on 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 revising uh, the etched parts and, and working out how to turn it into a kit which is eventually what as I say built this this version up this was the the final kit parts there's a slightly better fitting uh, piece of the top um, is basically the only real difference I think um, just so that the etches the etches fit nicer um, but you know it's still there's still quite a lot to do to go from from this to, a, to an actual kit um, so although this was also ready um by the the april um i actually had this sat on one of james hilton's um layouts during the day um i'd managed to mess up the pickups the night before so it wouldn't run but i had this sat on one of his layouts while the other one was in the display case um and yeah so from the april uh we started working in in more earnest on actually doing a kit so there was a lot more of kind of working out how best to to lay out the edges um to cut down on cost there was issues of you know how do we actually afford to put together an initial run of kits. Um, I did thirty kits to start with, so there's quite a quite an outlay in in, in cost just on buying in the parts. Um, so we did a we did a, a pre-sale um, that went on that went on pre-sale in the August of 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 twenty fifteen. Yeah, um, and <clears throat> the thirty kits sold out. Um, I think within a couple of weeks. Um, the intention being that I would take them to. Uh, one of the narrow gauge shows, um, Expo NG, um, that was being held, um, I think, on Halloween that year. It was it was the end of October. Um, so the idea was that I would have everything, everything ready for the end of October. Um, so that obviously meant buying all the parts, uh, writing proper instructions, uh, and when the parts arrived, and again I'll I'll put some pictures up. Um, obviously there was quite a lot of work still to do there because what I get is obviously. Um, a whole bunch of, uh, of of this one, a whole bunch of prints and a whole bunch of metal chassis. Um, obviously, the prints need cleaning, um, so there was quite a lot of work there to clean off the kind of wax that's attached to them when they come from come from the printers. And also, 
um, every chassis uh, rather than assuming that um, everybody building a kit will own the right kind of reamer um, I went through and reamed out by hand um, all what one two three four five six uh, bearings um, in all 30, 30 kits um, so there's quite a <laughs> quite a lot of work um, there and then obviously there was things like you know the cutting the right lengths of wires for each kit um, all the separating out all the gears the wheels counting them all in so there was there was, there was quite a lot of work but we made it um, and I took uh, a bunch of the kits to to the to the show at the end of October uh, where people collected them um, the rest that where people weren't attending the show went out by post um, and by the time we got to um, October we'd already started working on a, a second run of the kits because uh, they'd sold out so quickly um, so yeah so that was that was really nice and it's been in it's been in production on and off uh, since then uh, I don't think there are currently any kits in stock um, but um, if you I'll leave a link in the description description if you're interested in a kit then then register your interest um, and when that when that gets high enough I'll do another batch um, it's not really worth me trying to do one-off um, one-off kits but if I get you know somewhere around the kind of six eight ten people interested then it starts to become uh worth doing a, a print run um so yeah so that was that was the the building of this and as you can see it, it takes a lot of um design cues from the other the other models we looked at so there's a 3d printed core with etched overlays that comes from the the narrow planet bagley jury um there's a reasonably easy to assemble um, chassis um, I say reasonably it's very small it's very fiddly but it has a very similar design style um, to the chassis in the quarry Hunslet from Brian Madge um, so yeah so you can kind of see how I got from those first two uh, to this I'm still amazed I managed to to pull it off as having built just two locomotive kits I never actually built up a complete chassis how I thought I had the nerve to try and assemble well not disassemble but design one um, I don't know, but it was it was a fun process. Um, it got me, um, you know, involved with with a, with with a lot of people I wouldn't necessarily have spoken to or, or dealt with before. So, um, you know, designing um, designing kits and putting them out under the the Narrow Planet uh, brand was nice. Um, so yeah, so um, and it um, it funded um, the 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 profit that there was funded. Um, more tools so it's as, instead of doing a lot of some of modeling by hand um it was able to uh fund some tools so it bought the the, the lathe that i have the small model makers lathe um which obviously feeds into more more development more kit design uh, and things and gets me to again the point where we we kind of are now um so yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed that as i say it was the the you know first model i designed kind of from scratch um first kit i've i've produced and had other people buy uh, I think the first of my models to have appeared in one of the mainstream uh, railway magazines that you can kind of you know walk into a shop and buy uh, and not from an article I wrote but um, when there was one of the first batch uh, went to somebody I think at British Railway Modeling Ben Jones I think it was that bought it um, he had some help from Phil Parker trying to put the, the chassis together they did they did have some issues uh, which they highlighted in the in the article that they, that they wrote but it was it was you know and it was nice to see it in print from somebody else um somebody else putting it together um they um they, i could have fixed some of the problems they highlighted had they spoken to me but uh, i guess you know it was it was kind of um true to what a lot of other um modelers might have faced had they bought the kit and and, and just tried to follow the instructions um so it was interesting from that point of view to see see somebody else's experience um yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed that um as i say it'll be a few more models before we get to another one i've designed myself the rest have been kind of um kits i've built but um, there will be more more uh kits i've designed videos at some point um but this was the this was the first so as i say it's been a bit of a longer video than the previous two uh but hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you've um in, in, found it interesting to see how um how it kind of progressed from the, the original kind of fairly rubbish um, nylon chassis through to the, the 3D printed um, brass. Um, and then not just that, but then through from a model that I could build and put together myself uh, to something that was that was feasible as a, as a kit for others to, others to build. Uh, so thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.